I am here with uh, Chuso Vermashena, uh, the CEO and co-founder of GigsWiz.com. And uh, hi, Chuso. And uh, first of all, thanks for making the time to come on the show. Hi, Andrea. And thanks for having me. Well, first of all, uh, what is GigsWiz? Well, uh, well GigsWiz is, uh, is a Helsinki, Finland-based uh, startup doing uh, music, live music industry analytics services. Uh, we're quite an early stage. We just started out like four months ago with an alpha stage program. And uh, right now we're open free beta at the moment. But the actual uh, service is for the live music industry to decide their uh, touring decisions better. And uh, just basically trying to make it easier to recognize the, the local markets better. Who is behind GigsWiz? So you are one of the co-founders. And uh, when did you get the idea for this service? And how long uh, did it take you to develop it? And uh, how long have you had the idea for? Well, actually, I I first started out the company uh, a little over a year ago by myself. Yeah. And I was I was then I was doing an automatic uh, gig booking service, which I found out that it wouldn't work in this industry. Uh, it, It took me four or five months to kind of developed first and and then I first came out with the, with the with the very early stage beta to our, our customers basically the promoters and the agents and uh, kind of the user feedback I got from them was uh, not very positive so yeah. I immediately noticed that okay this this industry isn't isn't ready for this kind of solution and I started looking for for un- other ways to kind of tackle the same problems and same issues that I had previously when I first figured out that maybe an uh, automatic booking agent would be a good, good thing to do. Then I found uh, Jonas and, and Gaitsu from here in, in Helsinki. They were doing a video feed service for, yeah. for, the, for the sports community and, and, and music as well. And, they, and we had a kind of quite a lot of uh, same ideas and, and they, know, they noticed the same kind of issues before by doing, doing stuff with the music industry as well. So we started like, looking at what, what would the way to basically tackle the same problems as easy and as, as uh, minimum steps as possible. And we found out that maybe, okay, we have this uh, huge problem in, uh, in, the, in the live music industry in, in maybe just basically the artists and, and the bands and, and their, and their uh, managers and agents and, and booking agents don't really know that much about the local markets. Yeah. And they don't, they don't have that much like knowledge, and they don't use quantitative analysis as much as they, they basically could use at the moment. And, the, and there's, there's quite a lot of non-transparency regarding the, regarding the whole booking process. When you take it down to fan and the band level, yeah. the fans don't really know what's, what, what kind of counts when it comes to booking a show, and the, and the, bands, don't, and the bands and their kind of management don't really use the fans as much as they can. Yeah. To, to basically make the decisions better, so we started looking at that, looking at that thing, and and we started building our alpha stage on was it tenth of February or something, and and the week after that we had we had the we had the first product at hand, and we we started talking to our kind of customers, to the, talking to the bands and, uh, and the record labels and the live music industry in particular. Yeah. Uh, Right at that stage, so we've been developing for now for four months and um, and just basically taking all the feedback that we can from the from all the stakeholders and trying to develop the the simplest and the most easy to use tool as possible for them to make decisions. The service tracks uh, uh, where fans are coming from as well, including MySpace and Facebook and the band's own site. And uh, have you seen, like, uh, throughout the beta, like, prevalence of one service over another? Like, have you seen, like, most users coming from MySpace? Or have you seen the band's own site being the most important source of traffic? Well, uh, right at the very first, uh, bands and, and the early stage of the alpha, we noticed that, okay, it, it has a very much to do with uh, how the bands kind of communicate about this new possibility to their fans. Yeah. So let's say they, they make a Facebook wall post about, about, this, about this new tool and that kind of directs the fans to, to, to make their votes or, or demands or, or requests yeah. towards that particular service. So there's no, there's no dip, 
definitive uh, best possible solution yeah. that we can see right now. But yeah. uh, I'm sure we, we are coming up with uh, with our uh, kind of official Facebook application next week, and I'm sure that's going to be a good uh, good indication of on where the fans are at the, at the moment. I'm sure I'll I'd be I'd be more I'd be wiser to answer this question like uh, in a week or something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, how how does the the service actually work in practice? Is it a background tool, or is this something that the 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 fans actually click on in order to you know say you know I'm here, I, I would like the band to play in this particular place? Right now, in the in the early stage phase, we have uh, we are offering the bands the tools. Uh, which they can use to collect information about about yeah. okay about the fans, uh, and it's it's a basic it's basically a widget right now and the Facebook application of course, yeah. but they can they can embed the, embed the actual widget just as you would like a YouTube video to their uh, home pages and MySpace pages and Facebook pages, yeah, and and the widget right now the widget only asks where do you want to see us play live yeah. us as in the band. Uh, but we are looking into ways to, uh, during the beta, we're looking into ways to maybe introduce other supplementary data, yeah. uh, which we are which we are planning to gather from several different sources. But again, as I said previously, uh, we are very closely developing this, this, this whole tool with the live music industry, the promoters and the agents and the bands themselves and the managers, and trying to basically look for ways to make this as simple and as, as, as effective as possible. So that we, we don't want to gather data from all over the place. Yeah. Uh, we just want to kind of know which are the key metrics, which are the key decisions, decision makers to the, to the industry and try to develop on that. Yeah, because uh, one of the things that's interesting about the service is that, you know, there are many services that maybe uh, get statistics of where the fans that visit your site are from. But it doesn't mean that those fans are actually going to come to your gig. So it's quite cool that if you have a, a proactive sort of approach and the fan actually has to specify in a widget, I would like to see you play here, then maybe you have more of an idea of how many of your fans actually would come to see you live. Exactly. That's, that's actually one of the, what's one of the key, key kind of issues we noticed when we first started developing the tools because we saw that, okay, the, the markets are changing and the, and the key kind of uh, metric for for deciding basically the ARP, the average revenue per user, previously was the uh, the record sales. But yeah. of course the record sales are faltering right now in a rapid, rapid pace. So that that means that the live music industry, like the promoters and the and the and the agents can't really see where their fans are. Yeah. Where are the fans are really willing to kind of part their hard earned money with. Yeah. So we need a supplementary metric for the decisions yeah. because uh, actually the the one thing that was previously the one that you you immediately saw that we have active fans here it just it doesn't really work if you have ten thousand fans playing in Helsinki uh, or listening to say Black Eyed Peas in Helsinki through through say Spotify if you don't know how many of those ten thousand are really willing to kind of spend money on them yeah sure and one one of the ways is to basically try to get them to and participate in some other way, just by making uh, making a contribution to to just give their data out and and give their kind of voice their opinion to broadcast their intentions, so to speak. You have embarked in a in a sex, drugs, uh, rock and roll, and analytics store uh, to promote the service, uh, uh, you know, throughout Europe. And you came here in Britain for the Great Escape, for example, yeah. and you went to other events. Uh, so, um, what has been people's reaction to the service? And are you planning to attend more events this year? Yeah, it was a bit of a fun. Uh, the the whole moniker for the for the tour is Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Tour. Of course, we have that. That's our basically our title. It's not it's not only Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll anymore. You <laughs> yeah. have to take in the analytics as well. But the tour the tour actually was kind of an accident. I I, I was supposed to be in in Hel uh, from Helsinki to to Brighton and and in Berlin in a kind of a couple of meetings and in Denmark. For another showcase festival in two weeks' time, so and I didn't make uh, didn't make uh, flight reservations in time, so everything was very expensive. So okay, I have to take in all three three cities, basically whole northern part of Europe by train. Yeah. So I think okay, there's something here. That's basically what what most of the bands are doing when they're touring. And okay, I need to understand the kind of the issues and kind of the hell that they go through with yeah. when they when they when they tour. So that's why. Basically, just titled it "Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Tour," 
But uh, otherwise, it's been very good. It's been the feedback from from these events has been very very good. Uh, lots of interesting people. I've got lo- I've had, lo- have had lots of feed- uh, very good feedback on on which to uh, on which to develop our tools further. And and the uh, simple fact is we're we're in Helsinki. It's not that big of a town. We have a I don't want to diss the this the uh, Finnish rock industry or music industry any, uh, like. At all, but uh, still, we're a very small market, yeah. and you, you basically need to get out to to talk to the talk to the European markets better. It just doesn't cut it to be here only here yeah. and try to try to solve all the all the all the problems in the international markets from here only. So, of course, we are looking looking at other showcase festivals and other other uh, events in, in in Europe and actually in, in the states as well. Uh, how is the developers scene in Helsinki? Because uh, you're possibly the first startup that I can think of from Helsinki. So, uh, h- how is the scene over there? Or you know, are, are there not that many developers? Uh, there's quite a lot of. It's actually quite vibrant scene here. Uh, it was actually uh, one of these startup events that I met Kaitsu uh, and Jonas, our co-founders, our two yeah. co-founders. So it's it's quite a kind of a vibrant scene going on here. But uh, we're not that loud. I, I think we're the loudest one here because we quite a lot of surprisingly good amount of kind of early stage buzz already. Yeah. We we got recognized in in uh, red herring competition and competition in Paris in 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 May, and uh, we've had a lot of press already. So there are quite a, quite a lot of uh, startups in particular uh, startups and, and actually music startups in particular. We have. Uh, we're running Geeks is running uh, kind of uh, Finnish Finnish music startups kind of uh, cooperation scheme yeah. with ten different music startups. Oh wow! In Helsinki, yeah. So we do have them, but uh, we're quite a lot of them are quite early stage and yeah. uh, still still developing. But so Geeks is a very young service and. Uh, just to finish, uh, how are you planning to develop it? Uh, you talked about the, you know, uh, implementing a sharing facility, and uh, with the, the booking agents and managers. And how important is is that going to be to the development of the service? Uh, it's it's going to be very, very, very important for us to kind of get the promoters and the, uh, agents into the program as well, because we need we need a way for the for the bands and the fans to kind of. Make sure that the the, the votes or the, the the requests that the fans are get are giving goes all the way through the value chains. So we need to get the promoters and the, and the agents in the in the indus, in the in the service uh, as well. And we are developing like three different like development tracks at the at the moment. There's there's the development track that that got out in beta just uh, just this week. That's for the for the bands, and we have two different kind of user interfaces in development for for the agents and the and the and the promoters as well so cool everything's going going quite quite nicely and uh, because we are we are developing the service following the kind of the lean startup methodologies that that Eric Ries kind of coined a couple of years ago which basically means that we are going ahead in small iterations and always validating every every step of the way through yeah. our kind of customers and that kind of makes us go very, very fast. As I said, we just started out like four months ago with the development, and we've quite, we've gotten quite for, uh, far along already. So cool. it's nice to see what's 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 going going to be ahead of us in in like let's say six months' time. Because again, everything that's going to happen is going to happen because of our customers say so. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I Thanks. really look forward to hearing. Uh, uh, what's uh, going on with GigsWiz in a few months' time and how it has developed and how you've yeah. expanded. Thanks much, Andrew. Thanks, bye-bye.